Hi everyone and welcome to Be True, my podcast about the writing I love and the writing I do. I promise I won't rhyme the whole time. I'm John Tessitore and today the opening pages of Your Father Was Leonard Cohen, a longer poem from my chapbook Sometimes I Still Pray. You can find Sometimes I Still Pray and all of my work at johntessitore.com. The subtitle of Sometimes I Still Pray is A Family Album. It's a little book of memories in poetry and prose with some pictures thrown in dedicated to my father, Joseph Tessitore, who died in 2019. If you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know that Joe T. was a larger-than-life figure. (laughs) He was my father, my friend, my antagonist, and sometimes my son. (laughs) One of the strangest aspects of our relationship had to do with our professional lives. My father found his way into book publishing through a very circuitous route that had almost nothing to do with literature, words, or writing of any kind. He started out in direct mail marketing for financial publications and ended up being a book publishing company president and a good one. But he didn't really read books, except books about the New York Yankees. In fact, although he knew how to work a cocktail reception, he had a bit of an antagonistic relationship with highbrow literature and art of any kind. He succeeded because he had good instincts and a no-nonsense common touch that served him well enough in the business world, but he had no patience with pretension of any kind. But he had a son who came out of the womb writing. (laughs) Ah, shit. And that friction became a part of our relationship, in the very special way that he and I experienced friction. He would poke me, make fun of my interests, tease me, tell me it's all bullshit, by which he might mean fiction or poetry or music or painting, depending on the day, all bullshit. (laughs) He would make me angry on purpose for the sport of it. And yet, we both knew that he would do anything he could to help and support me in anything I tried, including bullshit. (laughs) So it wasn't often that he would say anything complimentary about the writers and artists who interested me. He took enormous pleasure in telling me that Springsteen was bullshit, and so was that Irish guy Boner, (laughs) although he really liked Bono when he met him, or that poetry, which he never read, was just more, and I quote, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) Now, his father, Frankie T., was the son of immigrants, a machinist by trade, with an eighth grade education. And he was legitimately interested in everything, (laughs) like me. Frankie T. appreciated beauty of all kinds, in people, in art, in music, in well-tailored clothing, in efficient engines, in well-made cameras, in perfectly shaped tomatoes. He was a museum-goer in his younger days, and there were rumors that he had been a reader at one point. But he was funny and open-hearted and earthy and fascinated by everything, to my father's great annoyance. And he would often say to my father, in a moment of frustration and usually in a moment of laughter, How could you be my son? (laughs) So that sets the stage for the section of the poem I'm about to read. One day, in an unguarded moment just before we found out that Joe T. had the cancer that would kill him, He compared one of my cultural heroes to his own father, and not in a bad way, which was rather mind-blowing. Normally he'd tell me that Leonard Cohen couldn't sing, or what the hell was the big deal anyway, or why is this old man still on stage, anything to piss me off. But this time, he wasn't mocking my interest, he was comparing a celebrated, world-renowned writer-singer to his father, who had lived a rather humble life in Brooklyn, at least from the outside looking in. And the strange thing was, even in that moment, I knew exactly what he meant, about my grandfather, but also about himself and about me. Somehow he was using Leonard Cohen to link the three of us, just like the picture on the cover of Sometimes I Still Pray, if you've seen it, and just like I try to do in this poem. such a strange thing for you to say in hindsight, as if you already had an insight into something we had never discussed about lust, music, poetry, and how they're all the same thing for me. Also as if you knew that it was time for a summation, the opening of your valediction, like giving me a reason to carry on a tradition that had not found its proper form 
in our family. At least not yet. But this is what you told me as we were driving together. We drove together so often, I can't remember where. You said you were watching a concert on television and, you know, my father was Leonard Cohen. Suddenly you gave me a glimmer of a different soul, the gleam of a sun behind the clouds of your anxiety, the evidence not of intelligence, which was never hidden, but of a new sensitivity. Never a Philistine or a Pharisee, but a man who tried to live within a mainstream, impatient with poets intoning to heaven. Ever the angry altar boy who saved his approval for the doxology, for the quickest glory be, and suspected any art that delayed a thought that fell closer to home, like your child's future, which would not be your own much longer. Try as we did to hang on. But then this insight breaking through the overcast of gloom. You heard the mind of a Brooklyn machinist, not quite an artist, in the voice of a Montreal Jew. High praise for your humble father, and easier after he and the singer left us smiling about the senselessness of fear, uncertain that better men have ever died better deaths. And I too heard in one the echoes of the other, the rhythm and rhyme of their restlessness for a life always greater than they could live, their dreams both sacred and profane, their knowledge that blood can boil. I don't want to ruin this episode with too much blah blah now. <laughs> I've already said a lot, and it wouldn't be true to Joe T's memory to keep carrying on. And there are several pages more to this poem anyway, but I just want to point out the last lines that I read one more time, comparing the life philosophies of Frankie T and Leonard Cohen and my own. And I too heard in one the echoes of the other, the rhythm and rhyme of their restlessness for a life always greater than they could live their dreams both sacred and profane, their knowledge that blood can boil. I think my father saw that in his father, that excitement and rage for life, and then he saw it again on the television screen watching Leonard Cohen, a man he didn't listen to or read, and who was a much cooler customer than any Tessitore has ever been, and then I think he saw it in me. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure he saw it in himself. For a variety of reasons, not all positive, he had a completely different set of concerns, way too many anxieties to be searching for new enthusiasms. But he was a very smart guy, with good instincts. And it turns out, he knew poetry after all. And so, in the hope that you have a quick conversation with a loved one sometime soon, a conversation that ties together some loose ends for you, this is John Tessitore concluding another installment of Be True. If you've listened this long, thank you. You can find all of my work, including Sometimes I Still Pray, at johntessitore.com. But first, why are you even listening to me if you haven't experienced the entire Leonard Cohen oeuvre for yourself? <laughs> Get to work. Special thanks to me for today's theme music, which I call Decord. Maybe we'll talk again, and if you enjoyed this little podcast, leave some stars or a review and tell your friends. In the meantime, I gotta feed the dog. All right, Luna, I'm coming.